Usually, the, the kids, after the like first month, they hold their head up. So uh, then, it, two months later, actually, she's still not holding her head up. She's really not really moving at all. You know, sleep and uh, drink the bottle, then sleep. You know, it's like like the it's really quiet. You don't really like notice you have a baby at home. She's crying. You know, she had a tear. She opened her mouth, but she cannot make the sound. It is so hard even for her to make a sound. In the hospital, doctor say, "How often you suctioning her?" It's like a, I say, "Yes, it's not how often. It's never stop." You know, I take the suction machine with me, going anywhere, even go, you know, grocery store. And I probably forgot my, you know, wallet. But this is this thing it never, never forgot. It's always there. So an ocular gyric crisis is. A very distressing episode to watch. Their eyes are looking up or to the side and then while this is happening they can also have stiffening that involves the whole body um, and sometimes also changes in their breathing and sweating and those episodes can um, in many cases last for hours, sometimes eight or ten hours at a time. I was so happy finally, you know, has the diagnosis. Yeah. I thinking it is, we can get the right medicine to treat this. There are generally medicines that are often used to, to treat people with Parkinson's disease, but uh, children with ADC deficiency typically don't really improve much with those medicines. It's really like a home hospital. We have no time for ourselves at all. This disease has no cure. At four months old is when everything changed with him. Jay's had no head control. He wasn't able to play with the toys that a normal seven, seven month old kid would play with. He started crying, constant screaming. The lights bothered him and he would tense up really tight. It was very hard. I had my mom here to help me though, so I was able to, some of the nights that he would be up all night, she would come up and help me. And so then I would sleep for about an hour or two. So at five months, he had been through three spinal taps, um, an MRI, multiple CT scans, We had to do a trial and error with a lot of them. At one point he was on 12 medicines three times daily, but finally once we got set on the correct medicines, he started opening his hands up a little bit more. The crying slowed down a little bit more. There was no family gatherings, and we'd always try. We'd take Jay's and we'd be the first ones to leave be there maybe five minutes because Jace couldn't tolerate it. You know, he couldn't tolerate the, the sounds. He couldn't uh, tolerate the light. He just, he couldn't tolerate a lot. So we would leave, we'd bring him home. The comfort area would be in his room. Really, he just stayed in his room the whole five years of his life. Then what happened is I heard about this gene therapy trial. It just happened that that the program that I've been developing for patients with Parkinson's disease has direct application for children which are born with the deficit of the same enzyme. In theory, treating something like this is simple in concept because you go, okay, if the, if the gene is missing, we want to just give it back, you know. Uh, the technique of giving it back is extraordinarily complicated. First of all, you know, we did not know if if that type of uh, intervention is called gene therapy, it's going to be safe. And we are not ready for children. We just didn't think that we did understand 
how this um, system might actually work. So it really has taken us probably at least 12 to 15 years to really realize that, you know, we're ready. Families had to travel to San Francisco from wherever they lived in the country and make several visits. They first had to make a screening visit to come and have some tests and meet the study team. And then once we decided that a child was a candidate for the study, then they would come back to San Francisco for the procedure itself and stay for three months. There was an immediate change in her spontaneous movements. Uh, her head control had improved, her eye contact, her visual focus, her tracking had improved. Before surgery, Jace could never really open his eyes. I thought he had brown eyes for five years. About two weeks after surgery, he was able to open his eyes up fully and he has sky blue eyes. They were huge and blue. Breathing, it is, that is natural for her now. Jace is sleeping, we're all sleeping. Everybody sleeps all night long. <laughs> Now he's only in his room for nighttime. She doesn't need a suction machine anymore. It's a huge you know, difference. He was having OGCs three times a day, sometimes every day, and he hasn't had an OGC since June 2nd. We feed her by, by mouth, and she's eating pretty good. If she's happy, she smiles and says, yeah, and morning, and like the words she likes to say. And if she's upset, um, she like grabs my hand and slaps my face and calls me poo. He goes to school three times a week and he'll go for about four hours now. He loves going to school and he's really happy at school. <laughs> she's learning how to walk. So we put the music on, always can cheer her up or sometimes she is not in good mood and, and can calm her down. It, it is one day I just saw her, she is, is moving, she's dancing, you know, it's a, it's a really, really amazing moment. He's more alert of, of who is in his life and the surroundings of his life. Her sense of humor, um, I've always thought it to be very slapstick. After the procedure, she would specifically, very deliberately and voluntarily use her arms for pick up and drop on the floor. It was very funny watching people pick up objects that she's thrown on the floor. So it's early days for our trial, but we're very encouraged by the early results. We'd definitely like to continue this work and be able to, to treat more children, eventually be able to make a diagnosis in a young baby so that they could hopefully never go on to develop all the difficult symptoms that all of our patients experience. You know, am I building a bridge to nowhere or is it going to be so expensive no one can, you know, buy a ticket to, to get on this bridge? And if we can break through this glass ceiling and somehow show that, you know, maybe there's a place for the non-for-profit biotechnology, a gene therapy company or foundation, we'll be very happy. He smiles all the time. So it's almost like we've gained a whole, a whole new Jace. Yeah, it's a new life. It's like she's like a newborn after the surgery. Mommy. Mommy. Mommy here. Oh, mommy.